What's going on, everybody? It's your boy Zoe with No Days Off DFS here to bring that NBA slate breakdown for the four game NBA slate. After having a big 11 game slate, we're back down to four. But um, you know what? There's money to be made. Last night was not a bad night. Uh, our value plays came through. Our stud Trey Young took him a minute to get there, but he definitely he came through. And then just the fillings that we, we decided to go with. They all panned out for a decent green night. Could have been better. Could have been worse. But we'll we'll take it. Made some money on to tonight. Let's try to do it again. Um, four games late. Not too much news that we have to pay attention to. A lot of it, of course, we're already going to get. Um, biggest thing, of course, to me, is the fact that uh, John Morant is expected to be back today. He makes his season debut today. He has served his 25-game suspension. So maybe the Memphis Grizzlies will hopefully be able to turn around, be interesting to see uh, the minutes that he'll actually play. I have not seen anything in regards to him uh, being able to practice with the team or things like that. So I'm not exactly too sure how this is going to look with him being back. And, of course, they have a mixing pot of guys uh, that they're running out there anyway with the injuries and stuff that they've been dealing with. So. It'll be interesting to see uh, Jaws' um, minute load, but I would expect for him to, of course, have the high usage that he had before uh, he was, um, you know, suspended for most of the season. Um, over here for the Pelicans, biggest thing is that Najee Marsh being just a game time decision. That's that's the only one to pay attention to. Other than that, not too worried. Uh, for the Spurs, sadly, we will have no Wemby going up against Giannis. We will not get to see that matchup uh, today. And of course, this game has blowout written all over it. Um, uh, one of those things that I try not to do is predict blowouts, but. Uh, when it comes down to a team that is is uh, such as the Spurs going up against an actual uh, super team, and well, not, I'm not gonna say super team, but a team that has much better talent on it, uh, in the Milwaukee Bucks, I will um yeah I I will accept that fate. But um so it looks like yeah we will have no Wemby today, um that really does suck. So interesting to see how this game goes for Milwaukee. Definitely think we might be targeting some of the bench pieces and things like that. I do have some interest in uh, a couple of the bench rotation players over the studs in this game, um but. Um, nothing really new for them. Boston, KP, he should be playing. Not too worried about that. Golden State Warriors, Chris Paul, game time decision. But other than that, uh, Jeremy Green, he's still serving his suspension. Over here for the um, Phoenix Suns, Bradley Beal, unfortunately, still out. Grayson Allen, game time decision, but should be playing. Shaden Sharp, game time decision. Uh, do not know if he's going to be in or out, but definitely something that we want to keep an eye on because Shaden, he is a big piece of that rotation. If he's going to be out, we might can actually see Scoot slide back into the starting lineup, or or they might uh, bring Mike, Michael Brogdon uh, back into the fold and let him start uh, right there. All right, that knows DraftKings, the site that we play the most on, the site that has been decent to us. Uh, if you guys haven't done this already, and you guys want an account, check the link down in the description below so you guys can get that deposit match bonus and join me over here on the King. And if you guys do enjoy the content that you get over here, man, make sure you guys hit that like button and subscribe so you don't miss any of the content. All right, so starting out, I'm um, kind of going to do like what I did yesterday in regards to studs, uh, who who I think that we should be paying up for, who I, I feel like we should be going to. Uh, just looking at it, the Vegas totals over here, and just the spreads, we have a seven and a half point spread, a 16 and a half point spread, 5.5 spread, and then a seven and a half point spread here um, for the uh, for the uh, Phoenix Suns game. So looking at the totals, the highest total on the slate, of course, is going to be this Milwaukee Bucks and uh, San Antonio Spurs game. But we're kind of expecting blowout in this game. And then over here at the Memphis game, it's a 232.5. But uh, the Pelicans, one of the top 10 defenses, like they are really good on defense. Uh, over here, Boston goes to the Warriors, 232 total again. Um the Warriors, they looked a little bit better since uh, Draymond Green's been suspended, but other than talent, going up against a actual really good uh, defensive team in the Boston Celtics, and they can actually shoot and keep up with them, be really interesting to see. I, I will be watching this game. Um, pretty sure that this is probably the primetime game. And then this is right here, which really kind of sucks because you legit have no Wemby uh, for this game to be any good. That is so sad. And then uh, down here, of course, the Suns taking on the Portland. Um, out of all of them, Really, for me, top guy that I'm looking at, and he's he's been playing very well uh, since coming back from his injury and the time that he missed and everything. And I really, really do like the upside for him here. It's going to be my boy Anthony Simon. We've seen opposing point guards going up against the Phoenix Suns, and they've been having some pretty decent games. Tyus Jones. Tyus Jones on the Washington Wizards just popped off for 60.5 fantasy points. Jalen Brunson, 84.5 fantasy points versus them two games ago spencer din shitty 40.5 fantasy points steph curry 43 darren fox 52 um i mean devin booker he's a great offensive player in all his own rights but he's not the greatest defender in the world and uh anthony simons go out there he can light it up with the best one we know he's going to chuck those threes if he's making them and look at this he dropped 38.25 fantasy points this last game going up against the warriors and that was without hitting any of his threes so he still got it done in all the other ways we know he's going to facilitate because like i said he is playing that point role they got brogdon coming off the bench uh they got him being the mentor out there anthony simons sitting at seven five 
and you guys already know studs to me are 7k and above so this is a, a mid-tier stud right here sitting at that 7.5 price tag i really do like the upside that he will bring um just just the price point period i'd love it uh definitely a really good spot um, to go to right there on the slate. Now, uh, if we want to come down and look at something else on the other side in regards to uh, possible studs, uh, just looking at it, I don't mind, and uh, I'm, I'm I'm still going to stay down here in some value. Um, CJ McCollum, he's been playing pretty well over these last couple of games, dropping at least 30 plus fantasy points in four of his last five games. Uh, going up against the Memphis Grizzlies, if anyone can help out this game, it probably could be CJ, as long as he's actually getting a shot to fall. Uh, there's no telling what kind of Zion we're going to get to show up going up against Jared Jackson Jr. Um, he's been facilitating, he's been scoring, he's been looking very good from the three-point line over his last four games really do like um cj mccullum as another possible play that we can go to uh speaking of all the other studs of course you got shiana she Devin Booker, kevin Durant, jason tatum john Morant. I, i'm not touching jaw until i actually see the minute load and what jaw looks like this could be a buy low spot to go ahead and get jaw i'm not telling you not to play jaw but um, he hasn't played all season yet. Don't know what John Morant we are going to actually get, what minute limitations they're going to play around with uh, down there in Memphis. So those are things that we don't have answers to. So I'm not going to take a chance and I mess with that just yet until we actually get clarification on those things right there. Um, outside of that, Damian Lillard, if you uh, expect for him to be the one to help get this game to blow out or you're expecting at least a decent run from him here, I don't mind looking at Dame. Uh, same thing uh, for Giannis. Uh, Steph Curry, Desmond Bain. J with uh, Ja being back, I'm not going to mess with Desmond Bain. not going to mess with Jaron Jackson Jr. Too uh, priced up in regards to uh, Ja um, actually coming in and being back. Definitely want to see how how they they mesh out and they they rotate and roll uh, with them. But out of these uh, other studs up here, I definitely don't mind a run back of Devin Booker um, or Kevin Durant, either one of these guys. And I think Portland can actually keep this close. They've been pretty decent um, so far since getting all their their main players and guys back. Um, so. I really don't mind the Romeka, Devin Booker, or Kevin Durant. They really do great out as decent plays on the slate. Uh, really, I'm going to end up staying away from Giannis and Dame. I just I don't see them really being needed in this game. I understand they could be the main catapult in regards to why this game blows out, but it's just I don't, I don't see it in the cards. And then Steph Curry going up against that um, Derek White and Jeru Holiday defense. I'm not going to mess with that uh, for Steph Curry. So um, really, that just leaves Devin Booker, Kevin Durant, Jason Tatum, um, Zion, B.I., Jalen Brown, K.P., and all these these other few guys right here would be the main guys I would look to uh, as for my studs in that stud range. Now, it's a four game slate. Trying to find value is going to be far and in between. Um, I did mention that possible value that we can go to is going to be some of those guys from the uh, the game that possibly could actually blow out if Milwaukee comes to play. Pat Connaughton, 3,900 is one of those players that I'm looking at um, since coming back. So he's been missing for quite some time, but. Uh, going up against Detroit, he played 12 minutes in the game, gave us 16.5 fantasy points. Against Houston, he played 17 minutes in that game, gave us 15.5. Maybe this could be the game he gets his feet wet and they let him go out there and he plays, I'll give him, you know, 20, 23 minutes. If he can go out there and return me and give me about 18 to 20 fantasy points, I would take that at the 3,900 price tag. That is decent for me um, overall. But 18 to the 20 fantasy points is what I, I could see in the realm for him. Um, San Antonio Spurs, they, they have been giving it up to opposing uh, small fours when they come off the bench. So I definitely do like like this position spot for him. Um, outside of that, another player who is in this game, we're, we're going to stay with this game. We're going to stay on this um, Milwaukee side. Cameron Payne sitting at 3,800. Another possible value play that we can go to. Um, his minutes, of course, they've been so-so in regards to he, he plays the backup point guard. But if a game is going to possibly blow out and Cameron Payne can actually come here and hit his shots, we know he can facilitate a little bit. He can play a little bit on the defensive side. But um, value, like I said, is very far in between. I don't mind looking at Cameron Payne. Again, if you like the blowout uh, narrative, I do feel like um, – uh pat content is probably gonna be the better play if i'm going with it anything there now one play uh player who's been getting a boost in regards to his minutes has been out there with the starting lineup again that's gonna be uh malik branham um he's gonna get that burner run even if the game blows out um just like this pelican game did he still played 30 minutes uh same thing here i don't mind going to branham uh with no Wemby being there we know the use is gonna be spread around throughout this team um branham i believe that they're trying him at the point guard position now um since they're done with the Shochan experiment yeah Branham looks like they got him slotted as the possible uh starting point guard so I don't mind looking to him as another value play that we can go to since he is in that 5k range as a possible play that we can look to uh, outside of that again unless we get some crazy injury news or something to pop up the value on today's slate is very 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 far in between um so this might be one of those balance type builds I don't see it being a stars and scrub uh type slate or games uh, for us today so uh, with that being said if we're going to be looking more towards that possible mid-tier range as possible plays that we can go to 
Um, definitely Grayson Allen grades out as long as he plays going up against Portland. Um, I know he's not the most prettiest name to click, but when he's out there, he's producing. And of course, no Bradley Beal. We know that he's going to have to score. He plays very well on defensive side going up against a young Portland team. He can definitely rack up those steals and blocks as well. He can rebound, get a couple of assists, but the main thing is his scoring. As long as he's out there and he's able to knock down his three-point shot, he definitely will go ahead and produce. As you can see, 34, 23, and 28 fantasy points. Don't hate that. Don't mind that for Grayson Allen. A really great spot for him um, as well. Derek White has been playing phenomenal over his last couple games. Uh, 29, 47, 30, 40, uh, 36, 49 fantasy points going up against the fast pace Golden State Warriors um, in a game where if he's knocking down his three-point shot for sure, which I know he went one of five in that last game, but other than that, he's been really just been stroking it from three over his last couple games. Pretty good percentages. Uh, that last game, 20%, not going to cut it, but if he gets back to that 40-ish percent uh, from three, definitely will take that, especially what he brings on the defensive side, his playmaking, and also the fact that he just stuffs stat sheet. Derek White at 7K. Um, decent uh, play for you right there. As another one you can go to. And if you believe in the hype that this man is back, then you can look to Klay Thompson if you're going to go ahead and come off of the Steph Curry. Since being called out, since being benched in that game, 46, 38, and 38 fantasy points in those games right there. And that's primarily just because he has been stroking it. He has been knocking out his shots. So Klay Thompson, another possible play that you can go to. Uh, opposing shooting guards going up against Boston. They, I mean, not shooting guards. He's actually playing small forward since they got pod uh, in the starting lineup. But opposing small forwards going up against Boston. They've had decent luck. Uh, France, he had dropped 34 in that first game going up against them. Struce, 34. RJ Barrett, 34. Buddy Hill, 32. Tobias Harris, 31. And DeMar DeRozan dropped 30 fantasy points. So uh, if you believe that uh, Clay can go out there and definitely have a decent game, um, definitely a play worth looking and going to on the slate. Uh, but, all right, guys, that's really going to be it. I'm not going to beat a dead horse. This this slate is it's not the prettiest. Of course, like I said, it's four games. Uh, right now, I know for sure I am building around Anthony Simons. Um, this might be just a mid-tier type day for me, mid-tier type build, uh, just getting some of those mid-tier players like the Grayson Allen, maybe looking at a Brooke Lopez, Bobby Portis, Clay Thompson, uh, those players like that. Uh, maybe even go with, with uh, Pajemski uh, here on, on today's slate. But uh, player pool, all this stuff will be out later on. If you guys are looking for that, check the link down the description for the Dub Club. Hopefully, you guys do cash out. With that being said, you boys know. Peace.